Hey, I made a choose your own adventure game in my new favorite language, Golang. I'm going to show it to you uh, right now. So uh, let me just open this up. So I've got my uh, app right here, choose your own adventure, and it's in my uh, stories directory, uh, in the unerotic directory, and I called it uh, Good Morning Computer. This is a sample story I made. Uh, and it's just choose your own adventure in the terminal and uh, it's pretty easy to write. It would be a lot easier if I knew Golang better, but I had a lot of fun doing this. Uh, and I'm really starting to like Golang. Okay, so this is the entire project. Uh, there's obviously a git directory, a git ignore. That's just to ignore this file, which is a, the binary that I created uh, using Golang, which is awesome. A Docker file, just to, I, I don't need this, but just to show you something in a little bit. A YAML file with the story and my uh, main.go, which is the actual application, which is not very many lines of code at all. Uh, let's find out how many it is. 146 lines, so it's really, really short. Okay, before we get into how this actually works, uh, let's look at this Docker file. So what I'm doing here is I'm using Alpine as my base image. Uh, if you don't know, it's the most bare bones image or, or one of the most bare bones images out there. It's got nothing uh, installed with it create my app directory and jump in there, copy over the binary, copy over the YAML file, which is the story, uh, into the app directory, and that's it. So that's the entire Docker file. Okay, so let, let's run this thing. So first I'm going to make my image with uh, docker build T, I'm tagging it, choose your own adventure. Uh, there we go, that happened very quickly. And now let's docker run dash IT, because I want to be interactive, and then choose uh, your own adventure. There we go. So now I'm in the Docker container uh, and again, Alpine. So, you know, uh, how can I prove to you I'm in the Docker container? You can trust me, but I can also say something like git and you go, git not found. Yeah, okay, so there's nothing in this thing, right? Vim, no, VI, oh, it does have VI, all right. So if I look in here, oh, no LL, right? LS, I've got these two things. I've got a binary and goodmorningcomputer.yaml. And so I can run the binary on the file and there we go. To me, this is this is a revelation. This is amazing. So I don't have Node installed in here. I don't have Python. I haven't had to, you know, git pull or, you know, composer install or, or npm update or, or anything like that. I just have a simple binary and, and it just it just runs on a file. It's amazing. And it, it feels it feels so good. And obviously it's super fast because it's go. Um, it's 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 great. I love it. Okay, so let's get out of this uh, container and actually look at how does this thing work. So uh, I've got a, uh, a YAML file here. So I decided I was gonna make my stories. Uh, I'm talking like I'm, I'm gonna continue this project. This project's done, right? I've made one story. If you wanna, if you wanna com commit, like if you wanna make a pull request, write your own story, you're, happy, you're welcome to do it. I'll definitely merge it uh, so long as it's not insanely offensive. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm using YAML for this. Uh, because that way it lets people who don't know Go write a really simple story and it will work with my thing, uh, with uh, Choose Your Own Adventure uh, written in Go by me. Uh, so a, a few cool things. So YAML, if you don't know, it's it's a lot like JSON, right? It's like a serialization format or like a data transfer format. Um, in some ways, this YAML file acts as the database for my, uh, for my little program here. So... I've got a title, I've got an author, I've got pages, right, which is an array. But YAML, if you if you put this pipe right here, oh, let me go back up. If you put this pipe right here, everything after that gets treated as like a, a block of text that you can insert. So I was able to put images right into, uh, into my story, which I just think is really, really a cool thing here. So every page has a number and then... Uh, and then, at, then every page either has an array of choices, right? So on this one, if you want to go back to sleep, right? If you want to follow the instructions, if you want to unplug the computer, uh, so it's it's got all of those. And then uh, you can you can choose one of those choices, right? But if there are no choices, that means it's a terminal page. Story is over, right? So either you've won or you've lost, and it's up to the page to indicate that to you. Okay, so let's look at uh, the actual program. So. I'm not going to go through the entire thing. That'd be boring and uh, not really useful. But I want to go into a few things that I really have been liking about Go. 
or or a few things that I think are really weird, but maybe I'm okay with. Um, so we're using structs in Go. Um, these are, I think these behave most similarly to object literals in JavaScript. Uh, I think that's the best comparison I've found so far. Maybe dictionaries in Python, um, something like that. But they're, they're, they're strongly typed. So I'm defining uh, a book struct, and I'm telling you what kind of YAML I'm using here, a page struct, uh, first page number, which is always going to be one. So if you write a story and the first page isn't one, program falls apart. And then a const separator, or sorry, a separator uh, that I just use sort of, you know, in, in as a graphic just to show, okay, this is the next part of this thing. So constants in uh, Golang have to be uh, known at build time. They cannot be known at runtime. So that makes them uh, a little bit different. And apparently they have cool properties because of that in Golang that I haven't got into yet. Um, and then so you just say, okay, you got to pass an argument in. If you don't, you get an error and we exit out. And then, then, we, then we just read the book. Okay, I want to show you something that I think is pretty weird to me uh, coming from, you know, more of a TypeScript, uh, Python, PHP, background. So this get book function, right? So the first thing here, uh, I'm returning a book, with a little star here, or an error, sorry, and an error, right? Uh, which can be null or not null. The book with the little star, that means that I'm returning um, not a reference, what am I saying? A pointer. I'm returning a pointer to that book, not a new uh, actual value. So in, in JavaScript, when you pass an object into a function, you assume, okay, Bye bye my function. Whatever happens in there, you know, like that function can now control this thing. Whereas in in uh, Golang, the default is you copy your struct and you you send that in. So you still have your original, uh, and uh, whatever they end up doing to their version, it's gone. But you can also pass it in with a pointer, and that's what they're doing here. So that that's pretty interesting. And the other thing that I thought is pretty cool, um, but kind of weird. So in Golang, zero values. Uh, for different uh, variables is, is a common pattern. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating a book here, um, but not with any information. So it's a zero value book. And then if there is an error, right? Uh, so if error does not equal nil, I'm returning my zero value book, not a valid book with the error, right? Uh, and so then it's up to the, the caller of this function to check the return values. Do you have an error? Yes, don't even look at that book value. Okay, it's a zero value book or it could be invalid or something like that. But that guarantees that this function is always going to return a book and it's always going to return an error. Now, an error can be nil, right? That's allowed. A book will never be nil. So you're always going to get a book back. It might be invalid. You've got to check that error. That's a kind of interesting pattern um, that I can kind of get behind because you just get great type safety with that, with that idea. That, uh, that you don't really get in the same way with TypeScript, where you might instead throw an error or something like that. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna show you from the book. Now let's actually get into this thing. So again, it was in Stories, Unerotic, uh, Good Morning Computer, and I'll just show you how this is actually working. So uh, I'm not gonna read the whole story. I'm not gonna spoil it, so you can get into this if you're really curious. Uh, so you wake up one morning, and you see your computer's already on. Strange, you think. I'm sure I turned it off last night before going to bed. You walk over to the computer and see that a message is printed on the screen. Do not turn me off. Open a terminal and type open connection 10 V3. Okay, and then you've got your choices, right? So if you want to go back to sleep and hope this was a dream, turn to page two. If you want to follow the instructions on the computer, turn to page three. If you want to unplug the computer, go to page four. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit enter. Uh, and it's going to say this is not a valid input. So what have I done there? So I've I've tried to parse the response and convert it to an integer. And then if there's an error, and I can check that, right? So if error does not equal nil, right? So there actually is an error. Return. Oh, there's an error. And then I put uh, is not a valid input. Okay. Uh, same thing. If I do a page that does not exist, so let's go to page 100. Uh, I can also do that exact same check. Oh, there is no page 100. And there we go. If I type in something that cannot be converted uh, to an integer, there we go, invalid input. All right, uh, so 
we're actually going to go to page four to unplug the computer and uh, see what happens. And uh, it didn't have to be this. It didn't end well. Sorry. I'm really sorry. It did not end well. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. I've already thrown this thing up on uh, GitHub so you can check it out if you want to. Uh, the binary won't be up to there. So if you want to actually run this thing, you'll have to figure out how to do that. Uh, you know, I, I guess I could put the binary up there, but I don't know what you're running this on. Uh, so it won't work on Windows, right? You'd have to actually build the binary yourself. Um, but if you need help with that, let me know. I can show you how to do that. And if you do actually want to write a book, uh, I, that's amazing. I don't know who you are, who would actually have time to do that. Uh, yeah, so really liking Golang. I think this is going to be a language I stick with for a little while. It's been fun to write. It's been making me think a lot differently about how I write my programs. And just the deployment story there is amazing, right? Just, there you go. Here's a binary. You're done. Nothing else. You know, uh, I love it. Okay, have a great day. Bye.